Um, so I went to get it for around September, beginning of September. And uh, you know, on the first trip I actually came for a big bait up on the way to the snaggy, uh, the ski pit. I thought I was going to fish that, do a couple, like a couple more trips there. This place had been, it's still the summer holidays, coming right to the end of it. And I wanted to, uh, to give an air, you know, a big hit of bait and try and sort of come for the first trip with something set up, if you like, you know, try and get an air in rocking. And uh, yeah, I did so, sort of flew up, pretty sure no one managed to see what I was doing. Sneaked it in the day, a couple of big buckets of particles and chops and so on. And uh, yeah, then drove to the ski lake, did a couple of nights there, went home for a few nights and then came back to dinner for the first trip. I caught a lovely one that first trip from that area. Uh, just over 30 pound, I think it's 30 pound, four ounces, beautiful scaly one. And then sort of plugged away in that area for a couple more trips to no avail really. You know, they didn't really turn up like I have predicted. I mean, I was quite surprised that I didn't have a bit of a response from the bait uh, But yeah, the lake was still very green, you know, almost very behind from like other years, you know, the, the weed was still very rich. Although big, big bits were sort of floating up, you know, when it went green and drifting all around the pit, it's still, and still is now, very, very weedy. Uh, and it's been a bit of a struggle, you know, there's not been nowhere near what's been caught in previous autumns. You know, the lake's received the same amount of pressure. Uh, and it has been, you know, lads, I'm not saying it's, it's been near on impossible, but, you know, there's certainly lads that normally get amongst them, you know, bites for 15 nights or, you know, a handful of bites in sort of 20 nights fishing. Uh, and myself included, I'd gone, I think I've caught that 30 pounder, then went a couple of trips, about nothing, then I had a nice 25 common and, uh, I remember just under 20 pound then lost the real well, what felt like a good one down the bottom end you know plugging around but just more trying to sit in areas where you know I fished on and off here now for five years and there's a number of them them linears especially you know that have got a habit of certain areas like anything I suppose you know they are creatures of habit and they keep cropping up so, you know trying to not necessarily put yourself on fish and trying to get as many bites as I can it's more so you know trying to put yourself in them areas and create something if you can get something going in them areas, it's going to be a good chance, or hopefully a better chance of one of them ones I really want turning up. Um, well, yeah, like I say, it has been a bit of a struggle, the, the weeds, there's normally a lot of fish get into that deeper bay now, out of the whole lake, it's an area of about 20 acres, and it drops down to depths, you know, 14, 15, 20 odd foot in there. And the rest of the pit of the rule is quite shallow. Five, sixes, sevens, a couple of areas, eight, nine foot. Uh, so you can imagine if there's no weed out here, that's like a magnet to them. Whereas this all, you know, the pond is, there's a lot of weed out, you know, still three, four foot off the bottom in areas. And, uh, again, from mooching round, so I've got a bit of bait going into an area. I managed to, it's the shallower, weedier area, managed to catch a nice 28. That's like a little one, you know, it must have been one that's grown through. It was literally three or four pound, absolutely down with rain early hours. Bit of a twitchy bite. And, uh, yeah, it gets him in here. I thought it was a tent all the way in, to be fair, a little tiny mirror. You know, whack the rod back out, and then the recast went about an hour later. And uh, again, it wasn't much of a fight, really. Sort of quite erratic, and I thought, God, it's another little one. Maybe it was a real fat, sort of plump bit of a kick on his side, a bit of, like, not a broken rib, but a bit of a lump on his side. Uh, just over 20, I think he was 2810, he was. A bit dark there. <laughs> I'll do. Yeah. Just over £28. Pound. Yeah, I'd heard of them in here, hadn't he? <laughs> yeah. But I'd heard them and seen them in an area just to the right of there, and there was much more weed out in that area, you know. A lot more weed out in that area. And uh, on the last morning, seen a few show out there, so nipped out there, a bit of a bait with what I'd left. So the pond, what people were fishing, it were mainly drawn into that deeper bay going off previous form, you know. There's people around the lake have it, but most of the lads that are sort of fishing it, if you like, if there's no nothing to be seen, because quite often you're sitting, you don't see a thing out here, you know, you might hear them at night. Whereas you can see them quite often all the time in the bay. You know, you'll go see fish in there in the day, in the night, but for the amount of bites it does, it's for the amount of fish that are in there. It's crazy, it should do a lot, lot more, you know. Some mornings you see 20, 30 shows in front of you, fizzing all over the place. No bad.
nothing for weeks on end. It's very, very strange. But I've always thought if you can get on them or create something outside of there in that shallower water, whether it's because they're onto you because your line lay, you know, it's a lot more, like I say, you've got bars and big, deeper areas. Yeah, it's, uh, it's certainly a lot tricky to catch in there, it seems. But I've always thought if you can get on them and get something created out in that shallower water, the weedier water, you know, a bit of sill and the feed and everything sort of clouds up, uh, yeah, they were a lot more easy to catch if you could get on them. Sort of came back and fished that area where I'd seen them on my last morning. Put quite a lot of bait out, a lot, a lot of crumb, a lot of park, a lot of bits, like I say, the water, sort of tap water at the moment, there's a lot of birds out there. And, uh, nothing for, for three nights, nothing. You know, I'd heard them out there, quite a lot of fish on my first night, felt really confident, bit of bait up, you know, I looked out there, all the bait had gone, certainly you could see sort of like black holes and bits of weed had been moved, you know, it, it'd certainly been out there. And, uh, yeah, nothing, sort of, and after hearing them the first night, I thought, you know, I sat there, rubbing my hands, thinking, you know, I've nothing. My last morning, I managed to catch three on my last morning, yeah. 20, no, first bite, that's the like, uh, late morning, early afternoon, I had a nice linear, it was a mega thing. I should repeat, I caught him a few autumns ago, 28 pound. Uh, but yeah, now looking much plumper, uh, Matt, he's red or coloured, he's a really, really nice one. He was 32.10, uh, managed to 26 common and a 25 mirror that trip. Right, been a bit of a struggle, but it was a nice 28, I think it's 28.2 mirror last week. Sort of back end of October now, last few days in October. It sort of fell from the uh, The foliage is starting to, some nice colours in it. But yeah, a little mirror, must have been one that's come through from spawning. Didn't weigh in four or five pounds, sort of early hours of the morning. Back the rod back out, and uh, yeah, just before light was away with a nice plump 28. Third or fourth time we caught him. Uh, yeah, back on this week. Not similar sort of area, but yeah, from having a I minute, mean, the lake's cleared right up like tap water in a minute, so being able to have a good boat around. It's visually, you know, there's some, a lot of weeds still out in this area. And, uh, although you see him in that bay over there, a lot deeper in that bay, big sort of features, drop off shelves, I'd like say deeper water. A lot of this main body of water out here, you know, five, sixes, areas of sevens and eights perhaps. But on the, as a rule, you know, a lot shallower. Normally this time of year, or well, the last few years, you know, it's been, uh, it's been pretty stripped by now, pretty barren. It sort of puts a lot of fish into that deeper bay. But there is a lot of weeds out there, really, hence why it's fished so slow this autumn, you know, really slow. Uh, but yeah, I managed one this morning. It's a lovely one, I've probably not weighed him yet, still in the net. Looks to be having a big 20 low for early. Sure enough. Yeah, nice one. Nice linear. <coughs> Absolutely, I'll tell you what, you could have got, could have got that battle on film. It have made you been frame that, I tell you. You can imagine it's, uh, I've upped him. Fishing really long out there, about 140 yards. And uh, yeah, instantly he's just started heading right, 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 right. You've got a couple of little bays in there, and as you can see from the sort of the tree line margin, you know, it does stick out a good couple of rod lengths. So as it's sort of headed right, I've jumped in the boat. Instantly, obviously, you're putting pressure on from your right, which is caused the boat to spin and then honestly the rod must have been over my head if you imagine doing circles in the boat four five six times and the nets dropped in blown away up to row back get that the slack line of effing and jeffing cursing <laughs> but no luckily uh yeah he was nailed and uh, he was never falling off so <laughs> we did get that one in what well, absolute <laughs> absolute palaver getting that in and down there uh, but yeah now corker so getting weighed up Hopefully, I've okay, done three nights, that's a bite on the last morning. We've given them quite a lot of bait out there, a lot of crumb, bits of particles and so on. I'd say the water's really cleared up, so the birds are a real nightmare. Uh, so yeah, just trying to get away with it really, as long as possible. But it won't be long, I mean, there's tufties back on, but another week, two, three weeks. 
it gets near on impossible fishing out over any amounts of bait, especially if you get that regularity going, you know, two, three weeks of it in the same area. That's uh, what I tend to do, big bucket of bait and, you know, clip up to the spot, put a bit on the spot and then sort of drift around that area, handful here, handful there, handful here, handful there, just trying to keep something actually in that area. And then when you're coming back, you know, doing the same. Uh, darker up baits, baiting up with darker stuff, you know. Uh, everything you can. <laughs> they are a real pain. But like I there's a lot of weed around as well, so that sort of keeps them busy, sort of plodding, plodding in the weed beds all day. That's the coot size. But yeah, hopefully. With this milder weather, you know, we're nearly in November, and uh, still 14, 15 degrees, 10, 11, 12 degrees at night, a lot of southerlies. You know, the amount of weed around, there's a good few weeks left in it yet, I think, so. Still a lot of bigger and stew. Big linear and a capture since the spring, so hopefully that's his bodyguard in the net. An hour or two he'd be in that net, eh? But yeah, let's see what happens. Keep going. <laughs> Rolling Barry. Three left home, it's about a three hour drive. But uh, just before, uh, well, I just got an extra hour last night, clock change. So, uh, yeah, yeah nice rough. Yeah, got down here, marched the gear around, and got smashed two arts of the cliff as it was getting light. I used to get back in the same area as last week, had them couple. Had them, well, I had three bikes last week. That's 25 near a 26 common and a lovely 32 linear. Yeah, big bait up before I got off, and uh, yeah, luckily no one's fished the area over the weekend, so early hours Sunday morning, straight back in here, two out to the clips. Just let this weather front pass over, and then yeah, have a little look out there in the boat and see what damage they've done. I'm sure, the beasts are in this area, there's a lot of weed out there, a lot of bird life as well, most of the coots. A lot of coots are out here, fishing out there at range. They're all sat at the top of the weed bed. Whoa. Yeah, I reckon a couple of hours kit. Turn the sensor bit on that bad boy. Maybe. A couple of hours kit. And then uh, get rocking again, have a little look. Hopefully that big linear well due out. Mostly bigger than due to be fair, but get my hands on one of them, that saddle back or that spike. That's why we're here.
He's back at one, isn't he? Leeches on him already. one of the last of the big, well, out of the bigger commons, it was certainly like I think, the last of them to sort of catch. Uh, there's certainly a few that I've caught smaller weights that have now pushed through, you know, but out of the ones to catch that I haven't caught, it was certainly the one, you know, big long one. Uh, amazing looking car, yeah, mega thing, uh, good all way, you know, November capture of him, he was 43 10. Uh, yeah, like I say, followed up a couple of lovely 23 pound mirrors. Bait up, but then as you can imagine, you know, the, the lake has been fishing quite tricky. Uh, a few captures like that drew a bit of attention. You know, like fishing the island swims, heading this way, uh, people fishing to the right. You know, sat in here this trip, just on three nights, and you know, watching Tufty's bombing bait just behind you. And yeah, I don't know, maybe they added attention in this area, just uh, a little bit too much for them to be pushed off. But uh, I'll keep plugging away anyway, like I say, it's cracking into the air now. The amount of weed out here, I'm sure there's enough to hold them for a little while longer yet. So that's about all we're up to, Barry. Lovely crisp morning. It's November now. It's starting to feel like it a bit as well. Yeah, no bikes last night, but liners. Had liners, a lot of liners. Uh, not last night, but previous night. Yeah, I'm sort of going out there having a look, completely cleaned up. Everything. Everything gone. Loads of five or six key chops, half a bucket of them. Loads of seeds. Maybe eaten everything. Yeah, liners again last night. And uh, I'm about three up until about five is quite heavy. You know, a good few liners. So at one point I was worried there was a load of tufty set out there. Uh, no, no birds. There's definitely got to be a chance of a bite this morning. They can't get lucky two nights running, eh? See a bit of the moon left up there. There's a new moon tomorrow, right after. Tiny little sliver. Dark nights, you imagine all them creatures that ain't normally out or out mooching. Maybe them sneaky cow power and all. Oh, the bike come out for a mega morning. On the 2nd of November. <sighs> Battle Royale. Good on this one. Real nice common. Oh yes. Mega. We're getting weighed up. Whew, I was convinced that was that big linear, I'll tell you. Rucking. Bit of a spike, he's also broke the surface out there. So he, oh. Buzz. Don't think about that one anyway, so mega. Get him sorted out. Oh, after I thought I got mugged off. We had that nice common. You can see him, he's down there. It was 43.10 it was again. Mega, mega, mega thing. 
And then, uh, yeah, just some a couple of lads over on the island over there. Obviously, they've seen what's gone on. So I'm on the phone to them, chatting them, telling them all about it. And uh, another one on the spot ripped off. But this one here, nice. Looks like a nice mid 20. Maybe a low 20. That's a nice one, though. Very nice. The uckle's been absolutely nailed as well. Fishing really tight clutches with the braid. Little, uh, little lengths of those in there and little helis. That's one thing I did switch over to the helis on the braid. And a few times, you know, trying to fish quite slack, big bits of putty there as you can see up the fluorocarbon leader. Yeah, I did notice on the leg clips, I'm trying to fish quite slack couple of occasions where dee 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 bobbin had lift a couple of inches 30 seconds a minute later dee 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 couple more and sort of fishing down the margin and so on you know I had one case where it sort of moved 30 yards to the left and gone 30 yards to my right as soon as we hooked it rod zooped over took a little bit of line and then uh, it was pinged out and another occasion as well where I've not had a bleep at all come to wind in to move lead's gone <laughs> you know not had a bleep obviously fishing quite slack so yeah, switching over to the helis, where obviously there's got to be uh, pressure from both sides. You know, they ain't gonna just ditch that lead, you know. Not until I have a, it, it's a tight clutch where I pick the rod up. But yeah, everything seems to be coming together nicely. Just buzzing to get my hands on that common. It's one of the, uh, yeah, not had in before. Mega thing as well. Yeah, hopefully one of them big linear turns up before it gets too cold. There's a lot of weed out in this area so hopefully they do, you know, it's probably 20 acres of electric blanket out there if you look at it that way. You see how much weed and food's about, got all the coots out here. Yeah, it's pretty clear where all the food's at. See if I can sneak an extra night in. I was meant to be going today, but some of them couple of bites, I'm pretty sure, well, 100% got cleaned out the liners yesterday through the night. Went out there, not a scrap of bait left. Changed the things around the little my rigs a little bit, shortened everything right down. That's how them helis, but only rigs of about four or five inches, setting the bead up a little bit. And uh, yeah, seems to have done the trick this morning. Two bites out of three rods on the, uh, well, I say on the spot, you know, it's not exactly a. Uh, you've got a lot of wee beds out there and little channels and so on so you can't exactly I'll be surprised if the re chucks fishing <laughs> it's more often than not you chuck them out to the clips and obviously the spot's getting clearer and clearer the more bait that's going out there but you chuck them out to the clips and uh, say if you put three out you'll definitely be redoing at least one There's some sort of scraggly bits of weed out there and so on well the spot initially sort of mooching around out there I've seen a few shows and I know actually the water cleared right up so, so I'm looking at the boat couple of, uh, I mean, there's, I'd say there's plenty of silt strips out there, but the couple in particular that I'm fishing, you can actually see all the snail all over it, you know, actual big snail beds, and sort of block them up, give them a clip, a couple of big bait ups, and uh, yeah, I mean, you can't see any snail on it now, so I'd imagine they'll well tune into the bait, hopefully, but yeah, giving them plenty of boilies, sort of five kilo of krill a night at the minute, they seem to be getting through, so yeah, hopefully that big fella's out there.
Yeah. Yeah. I just chucked the camera then. <laughs> <laughs> just hold him for five minutes. Where does it fall? Right, if you can. Just one moment. Hold him there, Barry. Like on that door, right? Yeah, go for, go for a lift. Hold him there. Enough. That's all I've got left. I've got nothing left. I've got nothing left. <laughs> Nothing left. Nothing left. Even get a couple of these on film. Boshers. Just chuck this single bright yellow mole bottom. Fourteen miller. Surely that water's like tap. They can't miss that. That wind switch right on the back of the wind they've got. Typical last day. <laughs> Literally everything's packed up, ready to go. And they start showing. And I see them now. And there is clock for next week, have a look. There we go, must have seen that one. That is right on top of that rod.